We're back on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Um, any update on your loan? Did you get it? Are you approved? Where are we? Listen, I'm trying to. It, it, by the way, don't be getting caught up in that PPP and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you do got to pay that money. Don't you do it? <laughs> Have you heard about the new loans coming out? No, yeah. I haven't. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm cool. Never uh, give your social security <laughs> number on the phone. Yeah, never. No, we, yeah, definitely. Um, my man Ron Hampton uh, on the internet says Garrett out here getting them payday loans <laughs> and they calling them back. <laughs> hey, you know they take them payday loans immediately out. They be garnishing you, dude. They get that money all the time. Straight on one of those. These oh, days. 27 and a half percent. That should be illegal. That should be illegal. <laughs> uh, well, that's like a loan shark. Uh, it's unreal. Yeah, it's crazy. It is like a loan shark. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Top five. Mikey McNuggets. <laughs> Top five. And then Travis Hafner. I can't wait to talk to him. Yeah, as soon as Travis comes on the line, we'll, we'll cut this short and get Travis on because whatever he's going to say is better than my top five. He's but scheduled for 11 or 1230, 12 right? Yeah, so okay. he should be here any second. So we're changing the right. run down a tiny bit. But I finished Ozark this weekend, which inspired this list of the least right. likable <laughs> TV characters that I've seen. And okay. before I give you the list, just know, you know, I haven't watched a ton of old TV shows, so most of these are relatively recent. Old TV shows. Yeah, that's okay. I haven't anyway. watched any yeah. new TV shows, but then you'll love this list. Yeah, right. it's, 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 listen. <laughs> I, it's, it's I've watched them all. White noise to me. Yes. Who has time them. to watch TV? Yeah. Go ahead. Mike, I don't nugget. have a lot. So we'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a yeah. lot. We'll I start with don't. number five, though. All right. Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. I, I don't can't watch stand the show. I can't yeah. stand right. him, and the fact that he got his own spinoff is a disgrace to good TV characters. See, now that's a character I know and yeah. have never gotten. No. I'm like, what is the appeal to this show? People love this show. It's awful. Do they? I, it's it gets good ratings. I thought it was dope. Brianna said, "It's okay." Really? I mean, yeah, it's not. He's like, I, I, I must be the only one who don't watch Big Bang. Theory. No, I've never. <laughs> I, I, you know, you know, you I say it's terrible, but I've never actually watched the full episode. Because you can't get through an it's entire awful. episode. Is it? I, I think it's because he's like his character is a geek. NCIS. Yeah, I just no, think that maybe uh, uh, that's who they're no. trying to appeal to. <laughs> and I, I don't. I, there's not enough fun of, of geeks. Is that still funny? I mean, that's. A, I, don't I don't know. I love Revenge of the Nerds. But yeah, I can't but that was stand 30 this years ago. It was a great movie. And it was really funny. This yes. I, Big Bang, I'm with you on that. It's a medium Cannot show. stand him. All the right. fact he got his own spinoff, there's so many better characters that could have got their it's own It's the show. younger him, right? By the yeah. way. It's the younger him. By yeah. the way, Jay, you brought it up. But the guy who played Lewis in Revenge of the Nerds, yeah. that is David Carradine's brother. You know the actor David is Carradine? Is it? Is it Keith Carradine? Or Keith, is it Keith, Keith Car Carradine. Keith, I'm sorry. Keith yeah. Carradine. Who's a famous older yeah. actor? That's and his brother. Anthony Edwards from ER and Top Gun. Right, was, was also Gilbert. in that. And Booger, Booger Presley was, awesome. yeah. was like one of the best movie characters of that decade. John Goodman played the football coach. <laughs> yes, he did. Right, I love that. That movie was very. The guy who played Edwards Ogre was, was in the movie Bloodsport with John Wood Van Dam. <laughs> wow, you're going deep. I am deep. What's, okay. What's next? I right, go in number four. I love The Office, one of my favorite sitcoms ever. But Andy Bernard, terrible character. Had a couple good one-liners throughout the show, but by the end of the season, by the end of the sitcom, when he was the boss, the absolute worst. Oh, really? The whole storyline, well, him going to Florida, just so stupid. At the end of the show, it was it had jumped the shark two years before. I never watched The Office. Did you what? guys watch it? No. Oh, never, uh, wow. I, I, don't, I don't think this. To me, I don't watch any sitcoms. There was an no ex. Kidding. Seinfeld. There was an ex I had who watched who watched uh, The Office, so I didn't see a I'll lot of. I'll find any of them funny. There's a couple of uh, well, Curb Your Enthusiasm on, on HBO. I that's funny. That's, yeah. that's, no, that's, that's great. That's good. Show. I'll give that's you that. Show. But I, I loved Andy's character yeah. on that. Yeah. And and if we're gonna cross over movie talk again, yes, his role in The Hangover. That's was, where he's. This right. is not an Ed so, Helms. Discret I love yeah, Ed Helms. Helms. Yeah, yeah okay, good. Because it's not an indictment of Ed no, Helms. No, he's his role on the show. No, it's his character. He had some funny seasons and some great lines, but. He had a couple one-liners, but the end of the show and his character arc towards the end, I could not have yeah. hated. His song yeah. in The Hangover about so uh, baby, uh, uh, the baby tigers. Baby tigers. <laughs> so good. It's like the unbelievable. Best. The best. Okay, who's three? Number three. Have you guys seen Breaking Bad? Of course. Skyler yeah, a little bit. Held Walter White from officially Breaking Bad, and by the end of the she season, was so she annoying. was holding it back. She was yeah. so easy to hate. Tough to put her at three because she should have been higher, but one and two. What's unfair, unfair is she's like the only not bad person on that show, and yet you hate her. She was very well, hateable. the show is yeah. called. Yeah. Don't disappoint me, Mikey McNuggets. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is next two are going to be I, two I, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for I'm the waiting. two. It's a top three. This was really a, a Mount Rushmore of three. Okay. She was okay. Let's, on three. Let's, let's go to let's, number let's two, see. though. Let me see. Let's see. Jeffrey Baratheon from Game of Thrones. I was sitting Well done. That should have been number one. Wow. Well, it was one. number one until Sunday for me. It was Joffrey. number one until Sunday for me. Oh, oh wow. So Ozark, someone in Ozarks took, took the so crown. So let's go to number one because Travis is on. We'll get to Travis in one sec. But okay. Wendy Bird from Ozark, 
became my She's official awful. most least likable character in the history is of television. Is this going to be a spoiler alert, though? I'm not going to tell you why, but let's okay, just say yeah. after the last three seasons, every decision she made oh, made you hate her it. more and more well, and more, and she you, ruined so many So this is a slam dunk for you. It's not even close. You should you should have had one of the girls from the show Girls on no, there. No, They're and, all annoying. And the chat don't agree with me. If you're listening in the chat, I need you to put a number one in the chat if you agree with this. Put the ones up. Daenerys Targaryen is the worst character. You talk about the last three seasons of, of, of Game of Thrones. It went from one of the greatest shows of all time. I just thought the last year was bad. But the last two, uh, she, yeah. she loses every yeah. decision she makes is, is hot garbage. You're going to watch the prequel? Yes, I will watch that. Dragon. So will I. Yes. I'm out. You could Brad, you out? I'm out. I'm, I'm out. out. I see OG. Put the, he's I watching see Walking Dead Put with the me. ones up. Walking Dead. My man, I said, I don't know why. top five. Man. Wendy Bird's number one. Joffrey could not have been happier when he died, but <laughs> Love that let us know on Joffrey. Twitter. And we have Travis Hafner, so what, we're going to cut that. What happened, what happened to Negan? Let's get to former Indians yeah. legend. All right, yeah, it is, it is time for the former Indians legend to join the program. The Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Very pleased to welcome there Travis Hafner. There he is. Look at him. He looks like he can still put on a baseball Jay, uniform and play. I played in a charity softball game. I don't know if you remember this, Travis, but we played at a charity softball game at the um, Lake Erie Crushers Stadium. You remember that? Yep. Like three years ago? And yep. he could still play. And I was playing first base for the other team, right? Yeah. And Travis gets up, and he's huge, and he's a left-handed hitter. I went into the outfield. I was, <laughs> I'm not standing at first base. He's a professional major league. Because you didn't base. want to get hurt. He's That's phenomenal. why. He's still a great. He's still unbelievable shape. He was great. Travis, and you he look was really great. nice too. My God, you look. You, you haven't changed a bit. What are you doing these days? Uh, well, I try to work out to stay in shape, and um, right now I work for the Guardians, and uh, I do a lot of uh, youth baseball. So I love coaching kids and um, enjoying that a lot. There you go, Bull. There's your opening. Yeah. Well, we were talking about it, Travis, because I'm coaching my sons. My son's nine. It's nine, third and fourth graders. We're off to an 0-2 start. I did double practice yesterday. <laughs> These guys are saying it's too much practice. I don't know. What do you think? I, I got to get them swinging. They, got, they don't take enough swings. In winter here, you can't. it's hard to practice. You know that. Yeah. Like the best part of coaching youth baseball is just watching the development over the season. So yeah. you've done the right thing, like get them off to an 0 and 2 start, right? Lower expectations. <laughs> I know. You're not, now you look like a genius when you know you start winning games. That's right. When we're in the World Series, it'll all pay off. Travis, I want to I want to get your thoughts on the most controversial thing with uh, with baseball here in Cleveland over the last year, and that's the name change. Here we go. Um, where are you on that? From the Indians to the Guardians, where do you fall? Well, I mean, I was, you know, used to Indians for so long, and it's still tough to say Guardians, honestly. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I understand the reasoning behind it, and I think over time it's just something you'll get used to. And, and you know, the, the colors haven't changed much or the uniforms. And, I, you know, I think probably by the end of the season, Guardians will roll off the tongue pretty easy. Yeah, we've all made the mistake calling them Indians at least a couple of times on the show so far. Yep. Um, I, I'm the, we just put a graphic up. It said North Dakota GOAT. Um, I, 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 I have some fun facts about your, um, about your high school. So you didn't even have a high school baseball team where you went to high school. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. We just, we just did uh, summer baseball and I'd usually have to go to one or two towns over just to play baseball. That's crazy. Oh, that is just absolutely crazy to think <laughs> that a guy with 200 major league home runs couldn't even play in high school. Here's my favorite Travis Hafner fact. Um, you were the valedictorian of your class. Would you tell the panel how many people were in your graduating class? There was eight. <laughs> hey, that's okay. He was still number one. He was, so, he, so he was I still. Was, I always tell people that I finished in the top ten of my class. <laughs> that's even better when you say there's only eight. Everyone can say that. That's wow. so cool. What was it like, Travis, growing up in, in, in a small town like that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's all you know. So I grew up in, like, a farming community. A uh, really, really small town. So, like every 15 minutes, there's like another small town, and like if that's all you know, like you're good with it. Um, and I even went to like a fairly small town in in Kansas for college. But you know, once you start going to like Dallas, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, like some of these minor league towns, like it was it was a big adjustment. And now I'm used to like you know we live in Tampa, was in Cleveland for a number of years. Like I'm just used to cities now, and that's you know what I like. Man, even even the uh, like the A ball cities must have seemed pretty big. I mean, when you for, when you first yeah. got, when you got to the big leagues and you start going to some of these big cities, and you know, 
even Cleveland is a smallish city compared to some of the other. Like your first trip to New York or Chicago or L.A. Was that like was it mind blowing? Yeah, New York especially was um, you're just like, wow. Like I, I remember going down to Times Square and just seeing that and you're like, wow, I, I this is so many people, you know, just from what I was used to, to going to New York, it was it was quite the adjustment. Hey Travis, the door opened up behind. That was real. That was really slick how that did that. Yeah, no. Is there a ghost? I know, like I was, Some, I was, somebody's I was, crawling I was, on the floor. What's going on? I, was actually, uh, I had an English bulldog, and he came in to sit on the oh, chair. Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on. Hey, that's okay. The, the you internet, love dogs. The, the internet dogs. was wondering. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, hey Travis, what do you miss most about not playing anymore, if anything? Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of people will say, like, they miss hanging out in the clubhouse with the guys, uh, being a part of that. Like, the camaraderie is great. Um, I miss, like, I miss, like, all the preparation, working out in the cage, um, watching the video, coming up with a game plan, and then going out and facing, like, you know, one of the best pitchers in the game every night. Like, yeah. just that preparation and the battle and competitiveness is what I really miss. You know, Travis, you know, a lot of times when you play for, for the Indians, um, we, we all know that there were certain restraints on, on the budget, restraints on, on the payroll. Um, as a player, did you did it ever frustrate you a little bit that you kind of knew that you guys, uh, you know, would have to, you know, build up every couple of years? And then when you got the guys and, and they paid some people and, and got some different pieces that you would have to kind of tear it down every other year, or every third year, whatever the case may be. Did that did I ever seep into the locker room or did you guys just kind of, you know, go out and just play? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, like you just tried to focus on what you had as opposed to like maybe what you didn't have or what you could have. But, um, you know, certainly like there were some, you know, frustrations like when we had, you know, guys like CC who who left, who was like a great teammate, great player. You'd love to keep him. Um, but, you know, like I think for the most part, we just realized like this is a team we got and we got to go out and play our best and, you know, try to win ball games with what we have and you know for the most part like there's always a good attitude good mindset in the clubhouse you mentioned cc when he gets traded to milwaukee that year and then he just went bananas i mean he couldn't no, he couldn't like nobody could hit him for a while were you are you guys like following that closely when one of your best teammates gets traded or is it like he's on another team it's off our radar no we follow it i mean it's it's a family uh i was good friends with cc and and what was crazy uh, about that for CC was he was heading into free agency that off season, and he basically went to the Brewers and was like, "I'll pitch every fourth day." It was amazing. And it went on for <laughs> it went on for months, where <laughs> you know his agent was probably like, "What are you doing? Just you know get through the season healthy, have a good postseason run." But um, that, I mean, that was just the type of teammate he was and team player he was. You know, Travis, you 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 are a home run hitter. You're a power hitter. I always, uh, you know, like to look at other people who do the some kind of something, some th same things you do. Um, who was a guy if you had to look at it and said, "All right, I'm so envious of this man's swing." Who whose swing would you trade for yours? Like, who do you think is a guy who you're just like, man? If I had that swing, man, I, you know, that looks effortless. <laughs> who did you really admire that was also a power hitter during your era? Um. Let's see. During my era, uh, you know, Todd Helton always had a good swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah. He was fun to watch hit. I think currently Mike Trout has a phenomenal swing. Um, you know, guys that are just, it seems like whatever pitch you throw them, they can hammer. Like, you know, the majority of big league hitters, like we have to look for pitches. Um, you can't just go up there and hit everything. But there are some guys that just seem so talented. They just walk up there, you know, and just whatever you throw them, they're on. So let me ask you a question, Travis. So when you uh, are at the plate and you see the, the top big league pitchers, which one had the smoke that you had to be real concerned about? Wh which pitcher did you have to be concerned about on that mound? Um, actually, like every pitcher that you face, like you have to have respect for because um, I, I remember when I first got called up to the big leagues, uh, we faced very early on a guy with like a five ERA and you watch him on TV and you're thinking, Man, if I ever faced that guy, I would smoke him like three or four times. <laughs> and then you get up there and you realize, like, wow, he's locating really well. He's got a great changeup. This is going to be t tougher than I thought. Um, but I, I definitely noticed, like, 
the top pitchers in the league are the top pitchers in the league for a reason because they're really, really good. They got great stuff. They locate. Um, and it seemed like some of the guys that I would face in their Cy Young years, their stuff was just like a little bit better. And they're like, they didn't really miss spots ever. So you've got nothing to hit sometimes on a, you know, you get three, four bats off them in a night. You just got nothing to hit. Going back to the pretty swings. I remember as a kid, Daryl Strawberry, I thought had the, the, the sweetest swing I'd ever seen in my life. I loved watching that, even though I hated the Mets as a kid, but I loved watching Daryl Strawberry swing. Yeah. Why is it, why is it that lefties yeah. seem to have prettier swings? I think generally they do. Yeah. And, um, I guess to your earlier question, like, Ken Griffey Jr., how did I oh, miss that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, poster child for sweet oh, yeah, swings. Yeah. yeah, you just, in your backyard as a kid, Ken Griffey Jr., Daryl Strawberry. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I think it's just the follow-through of a left-handed swing. Um, you you just see that, like, pull home run to right field, and it just, there's something really sweet about it. I had a lefty tell me this, and I, I don't know. I've, I've never really talked about it with many guys, but one lefty played for years in the big leagues theorized that, he said, we're, we're finishing our swing and we know where our momentum needs to go. As a hitter, you're thinking you're running to first base. And he said whether or not it's, it's subconscious or whether it was a real thing, for him, he always felt like his natural momentum needed to go to first base anyhow. And that's why he supposed that he had such a beautiful follow-through because everything he was thinking was getting down that first baseline. You buy that? Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense, like because you know the lefty finishes their swing and their momentum just kind of takes it that way. Um, I never thought about running ever to first base. I like I was just you know, pretty lost <laughs> about hitting, so I knew I wasn't going to beat anything out anyway. All right. Well, talking about running and beating something out, I don't know if this is true, but I heard, um, and I'll, I'll ask you to confirm it, that in the game in which you hit your first major league homer, I think it came against the Indians, right? Yep. You were playing for the Rangers. I was told that you also had a, a couple of doubles and maybe a single in that game, and then later in the game, you hit one that was that could be three. And and so Travis Hafner, probably one of the least likely Most guys likely. to ever hit for the cycle. Is it true that you were thrown out trying to stretch a double to a triple to, to try to get a cycle in that game? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it, came, it came up. <laughs> and everybody on the team was like, hey, if you hit a ball in the gap, just keep going. Like, don't stop. Um, especially what happened was I hit a ball to left center, and I think Matt Lawton might have been playing left field. So, like, it hits off the wall or bounces up against the wall, and I'm, like, almost a second, but not, you know, not quite there yet. And I think, you know, the ball's coming down. It looked like Lawton was just going to, like, catch it on a hop and throw it in. But then he, like, caught it on a hop. And it like trickled away from him, so then I kind of like had to restart to go. So it might have been a double and an error anyway. Right. But uh, I don't know. Like as this is happening in real time, I'm thinking like, man, I don't want to be the rookie who's trying to stretch, you know, something mm. into a triple and get thrown out and yeah. look selfish. So he did have 13 career triples. I just looked it up. Wow, that's 13? that's a lot more really? than I would have guessed. That's more than I would have guessed. Did you know you had 13? I would have guessed like two or three. <laughs> That's what I, I would have been too, Travis. In fact, you had three total in your last two years. Two in your last year in Cleveland, you had two, and then with the Yankees, that your last year you did have one. I don't know who it was against, but uh, you okay. must have been. Mo Maybe you got faster as you got older. You got a little faster. I don't know. Hey, Travis, um, your greatest baseball memory? What was it? Um, I would say the year that we made the playoffs uh, in 2007. We uh, we knocked off. Uh, the Yankees in the first round, and then was you know we got to Game Seven against the Red Sox. Oh, Couldn't get over that hump to make it to the World Series, mm, but just you know mm. that whole season, um, watching that team come to the, come together, winning our division, and then beating the Red Sox was, uh, or sorry, beating the Yankees was uh, just an incredible run and a lot of fun. I felt like that ALCS too was the World Series because you had the I Rockies know. and the Diamondbacks going in the National League. Yep. And I, it just felt like a foregone conclusion. Whoever won that ALCS was going to win. And, and I, I believe you guys went up three games to one. We were six. Francona yeah. was guarding. Yeah. Uh, was, yeah. was was uh, was leading the the Red Sox surge. Mm. That was a great year. Great memories. Hey, Mikey McNuggets is our uh, is our producer on the show. He has a question for you, Travis. So go ahead, Mikey. Yeah, Travis. So after Jay's question about having eight kids in your high school class, I looked up your high school. Is it true that your high school is called Carrington? Pigree, Buchanan, Kensal, Skykston High School? 
And if so, yeah, is that so, the most names of a single high school in America? <laughs> yeah, so we were uh, – uh, it, it could be now. Um, at the time, we were just Sykeston, and that school has since closed. Wow. And now, and now I think a lot of this, if there are Sykeston kids, ago. they go to Carrington. Um, so, yeah, it could be multiple names at high school, but that's how the sports teams were. Like my basketball team was uh, Bowdoin, Hertzfield, Sykeston. The football team, they just called Wells County because oh, there were so many teams. <laughs> you had to, like, provide so many towns to, or schools to get a team. That's amazing. What position did you play in football? I didn't play football. Um, I was my. We grew up on a farm, so what? the fall was, like, our big harvest season, so my dad what? always wanted me to put farm uh, yeah. work. So that's how you got so big. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. He was farm boy strong. There's no doubt about that. So I wonder what their yeah. jerseys look like now, Mikey, with all those names on the front. Yeah. <laughs> they, they must run out of space. It, it, they just probably just use like abbreviations. So there's probably like seven or eight abbreviations and then HS at the end of it. I like the Wells County. You know, short, sweet, just encompasses yeah. all the schools in the county. That Travis, yeah. what was your uh, most favorite and least favorite city? to travel to when you were in the big leagues? Hmm. Uh, so I was, I was enjoyed Chicago. There was like great restaurants by the hotel. Like, you know, we had, uh, I think Michigan Avenue right there. So mm -hmm. like just a lot to do as far as, you know, if you wanted to go shopping or whatever, but the restaurants were fantastic. Um, I don't know that I had a least favorite city. Like, I mean, there was, a, I mean, a lot of times, like I wouldn't even leave the hotel, like, you know, you, you oh, get wow. in, you get in, you know, three in the morning or something from your flight, yeah. you know, wake up, room service, lunch, and head to the park and just never leave the hotel. Travis, do you get to see much of the Guardians these days? And if so, what, what are, what's your general takeaway after 30-some games? Yeah, um, we'll follow them on TV. I mean, we have a lot of, like, youth baseball practices and stuff, so I don't get to see um, all the games, but, you know, They've been, I think they've gotten off to a really good start. And, you know, offensively, I think they've surprised some people. And it's been good to see, like, some of these young guys step up and, you know, kind of take advantage of their opportunity. Yeah. Do you see what's at the bottom of the screen right now? <laughs> I have to ask you about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's our producer, Mikey. There's, there's truth in there. to that. Like, there's very, there's, I'm, I'm calculated with some of my answers. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's smart. Because, Bull, as you ask that question, yeah. I'm thinking, first of all, Travis is too nice a guy to do yeah, that. But secondly, city, he's too it. smart. He doesn't yeah. want to be a, 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 an internet <laughs> clickbait headline. Nah. Hafner trashes Kansas City. I was just thinking Kansas City, too. That's so funny. I wonder why. I'm like, Kansas City sucks in my head. <laughs> Travis right. didn't he, say that. I don't even know. Travis, it Kansas is, it is uh, always great to see you. You look great. Just seeing you brings back so many wonderful memories. Yeah. Thanks for joining Thanks, the Ultimate Travis. Cleveland Sports Show. And uh, when baseball topics permit, we're going to call on you again. Is that all right? That'd be great. I love being on the show. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. You all right. Thanks, Travis. Travis Hafner.